Hello everyone and welcome back to another One Punch Man Season 2 episode review reviewing the last episode of the season. So before we get into it, make sure that you check out my Discord, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff is in the description below. And make sure that you watch the episode on Hulu or Crunchyroll or wherever you watch it because I will be delving into spoiler territory. So without further ado, let's get into it. So it starts off with Garo versus Silver Fang. And honestly, I thought I would have thought that Garo is well enough versed in the martial arts that he learned from Silver Fang that he would probably keep up a good fight. But it seemed like it was mostly one-sided. I mean, Silver Fang was just demolishing this guy. And it got to a point to where he had to try harder and it, it looked almost like they were perfectly even, but it really wasn't. Uh, Garo was getting the crap beat out of him. But it makes sense because not only is Silver Fang, like, he has a huge advantage because not only is he way more experienced in the martial art than Garo is, he's also, he has more energy and he's more, he's completely healthy compared to Garo, who's poisoned, feverish, tired, beat up. I mean, this guy has been through so many fights, he hasn't had a rest. And now he's having to fight his master on top of all of that. So this guy is on the brink of breaking down. And so he's getting the cr like the life beat out of this uh, out of him. <laughs> I mean, it takes all of Garo's power just to escape some hits from Silver Fang. I mean, the ground is like breaking apart and Silver Fang is fighting so fiercely and so heavily that Garo has no chance. He's getting battered horribly. There's a point when Garo is laying on the ground and Silver Fang just jumps on top of him and just starts beating his, into him. Like the fists are going like into his stomach and his chest and Garo is just has no time to even do anything. All he has time for is just to think and contemplate of what's happening to him because Silver Fang is just beating him into the ground and he's completely demolished. I mean, Garo has zero chance of surviving this. We get a flashback of Garo and he's kind of thinking about like his life. He, he thinks he's seeing like his life flash before his eyes before he dies. And the flashback we see is his childhood again. We got pieces of it before, but now we get a really in-depth view on it. And basically he, all the kids wanted to play hero. They all like heroes. And he kind of supported the monster because he, his view was that the monster was protecting what it loved and the hero came in with its false sense of justice and, and just destroyed the villain. And he didn't see the villain as a villain. So when they played mon heroes, they played a game called Heroes where some kids would be the heroes and, and then they would make him the villain because he was the loner, he was the weirdo, so of course he's a villain. He has to be. Only the popular cool kids are the heroes. And that's the kind of viewpoint that twisted him to where he's like, no, that's not a hero. Hero, He saw heroes as being arrogant, like the popular ones, the ones who thought about justice, but it was like their own version of justice, not what actually was. And they, what they deemed was evil, even though he didn't think things were evil. So his childhood really drove him to who he is today. And I mean, these kids beat him up. And not only that, but they were cowardly, which is usually how it goes, where they would like, when he goes to fight the kids, they would grab him or when he like would try to resist them or like talk back to them, they would always grab him and hold him in place so that he would get beat up. And it, was, it wasn't it was fair. Like no matter what he tried to do, it was never fair for him to do anything. Even the adults were against him. Like he actually fought back and threw a fit and he got in trouble for it. Not the popular kids who were harassing him, but he got in trouble for his actions and he was talking to the adults and he's like, look, I, he was being mean to me. He's like, oh, don't you say that because you're the one who acted out. It's your fault, your fault, this and that. And it's like, he's just a kid who's protecting himself. And it's so true to real life that that's how the teachers, that's how the teachers handle it is they punish the one who acted out versus the ones who are actually doing the bullying. They completely ignore them, especially if they're popular. Like in this case, it was the most popular popular kid in school. They're always overlooked 
because they're so perfect and they're so amazing and they have a bright future ahead but this loner loser kid doesn't so it's okay to beat him up and that's the view that these adults have and it's the view that Garo resisted even when he fought back like he stood up against the popular kid and said I want to fight you one on one and fair and square and just see who's better and what he instantly does is says grab Garo everybody grab him and everybody grabs Garo and he's like that's not fair and he's like no. and he just beats him up he just beats Garo up and Garo can't do anything because he's so helpless and so weak and he's tired of the weak being completely like overtaken by the strong so he wanted to be strong and be the strongest in the whole world to where nobody would ever mess with him again or anybody else who's weak it sounds like that's a good thing but he twisted it in the way that he wants to be a monster so then it's like it's not the same thing anymore it's he has a justified cause but the way he's going about it by becoming a monster and beating up heroes that's not the way it's supposed to be he's supposed to be a role model that the kids can look up to and he was kind of a role model to that little kid from earlier where he was giving him advice telling him to stand up for himself that's good but he's he's twisted in his mind of wanting to be like an object of fear for the world and i think as a side note that it really it really tells you how he feels about these kids and the adults in the world where they don't even have forms you don't see any faces or clothes they're like really misshapen looking blob creature looking things honestly they look like the monsters and so he sees them as the monsters not the heroes and he sees himself as the true hero but even though they always call him a monster they're the ones who look like monsters so this awakens Garo, this memory, and he just completely goes all out. I mean, he does the Dragon Ball Z roar of power, the ground trembles, everybody's like, oh my god. And in that moment, he gets basically rescued or captured by this bird monster that was flying overhead and watching all of these events. As soon as the bird monster rescues Garo and gets him the hell out of there, the giant elder centipede dude shows up and this guy is enormous it's like how the hell are they gonna defeat this thing genos tried to hit garo out of the air with a huge blast and this centipede just came up and took the hit i mean it bodied it and it did absolutely nothing to it garo was struggling because he didn't want to leave he didn't want to he wanted to fight his master and fight genos and, and overcome that obstacle but the monster is like look you're not strong enough okay you are not stronger than them and it really put Garo down because he like that's the that's the next hurdle that he wanted to get over and it, it, he felt aggravated that he wasn't able to overcome it but I, I think the monster I don't know what they're gonna do with him if they're gonna force him to turn into a monster or what but I feel like Garo in himself is more powerful than most of the monsters I don't know about the main leader and all of them how powerful they are compared to him but as of right now I mean, once he's healed up, he can probably take anybody out. So it's like, they won't be able to keep him for very long. So Silver Fang and his big brother unleash this huge freaking ultimate attack on the centipede. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it hits him right in the face. He, he like goes up and you see like throughout his whole body cracks appearing. And you're like, wow, did they actually defeat this thing in one hit? I mean, it's very impressive. However, it molts the attack off, like it sheds its skin, and then it gets a new face. So it explains all the faces that are on the front because it's molted several times, and a new face comes out. It's really disgusting and really weird, but very well done for a monster. It's, it gives the creepy factor for sure. Genos goes in to attack it, even though everybody else is pretty much given up because we're like, there's no, if our ultimate attack didn't defeat it, it's pretty much over. But Genos goes in because his master told him like don't don't overdo it don't push yourself but he genos feels like he has to push himself if he wants to become as strong as saitama so he goes in and it had some amazing moments like the animation and the way that they designed how the fighting is was really well done in this episode i mean they had to it was the finale of the season so if they didn't i would have been immensely disappointed but the part where genos is running alongside the centipede shooting the blast 
and hitting it from afar. It, it felt like I was watching a video game play out. It was pretty cool. I mean, it made it less cool because a centipede is CGI. So it was like, okay, whatever. But I mean, it was a breath of fresh air compared to most of the episodes of this season. None of these attacks do anything. So Genos goes for this like knife attack thing. He has like these blades in his arms and he goes in for the monster's face and just starts slashing it because I think he's figured out that's its weak spot. It's the only part that you can tell is not, has a hard shell on it. So he goes ham on this thing. I mean, he's slashing as fast as he can, but it's, he's still not able to do anything like significant. I mean, he even gets himself cut in half and it's like, oh God, is this over for Genos again already? Like his attacks, his fighting style, his theme music, everything about Genos is amazingly awesome. Like he's a cool character. It's just he never wins. <laughs> However, he reattaches his body and does this amazing like arrow kick to the monster's face. And this attack is huge. I mean, the monster is taking this to the face and you see the blast coming off of Genos and you're like, if this doesn't do anything, I don't know what will. Genos pretty much enters the monster's mouth, which it has two mouths. It has the one on its face and then there's the one below. He goes into the one below and it starts to like digest him because it's like, oh, okay, you're inside of me. So I'm going to digest you now and kill you. So Genos has to think something to think of something to get out of there. And what he does is he unleashes a huge beam attack inside the monster that kind of like shoots all the way through it and hopes that it would he would destroy its insides, which I mean, that's the best strategy you could come up with at this point when a monster has an extremely durable defense. However, again, it did absolutely nothing. It kind of like closed itself and, and it just took the heat and it wasn't like hurting the monster at all. And so Genos once again loses. And it's really sad because he's like, he knows once again I've lost and all this. Like, it's like if he was fighting any other monster besides the main leaders, I think he would do amazingly well. He'd beat all of them. But he always chooses the hardest freaking fights and it's like he's not ready for those yet. So then Silver Fang steps up and he takes his shirt off because you know things are about to get <laughs> amazing. And it seemed like he was gonna sacrifice himself. Like he was gonna go all out. He's like, I'm gonna give my life to defeat this monster so that we can get everybody safe because apparently they had nowhere to go. If they ran, it was gonna run towards the city and it would destroy, kill civilians. So. He had to step up in this moment. And you're like, oh God, what is he gonna do? However, King shows up out of nowhere with a megaphone <laughs> and starts talking crap or shouting crap, I guess, to the centipede monster. And he mentions Blast. So apparently Blast, who if you don't know is the number one hero who we've never seen, apparently fought the centipede and defeated him, but didn't kill him but it hurt him enough to where he had to take time to heal and then he's coming back for revenge against Blast. But we've never seen Blast at all. And I know there's a lot of speculation of who Blast is. Some people think it's like Saitama in a way, or it's uh, someone who's as strong as Saitama. I feel like some my theory is kind of like it's Saitama, but they don't, because they've seen all the heroic things he's done, but they didn't know who it was, so they gave him a name but he was never officially like in the hero group. I don't know. It's so weird because it could be so many different things. And, and we're like, who the hell is Blast? If he's that freaking strong to defeat this monster, then I can't wait for him to meet Saitama if he's actually not Saitama, if that makes any sense. <laughs> However, back to King, he had to show some real courage and resolve to show up, talk crap to this monster. I mean, completely like tell it stupid, ugly, that it's gonna get defeated, all this crap. And it took a lot of courage for this guy because he's a weak, normal dude. He's not strong at all, but he stood up to it because he had they had a plan in mind with Saitama. And it was hilarious when the monster was literally charging right up to King and it got really freaking close. And King was starting to get nervous, like Saitama, Saitama. <laughs> Cause Saitama was taking his sweet time to get there. But when Saitama showed up, our hero shows up to fight and you know that the fight is over and it's so epic when he has his cape blowing in the wind and he's going for his punch and it's like yes they have the, his theme music playing in the background although i missed the old theme i don't like i don't really like the remixed version that i have in this season but whatever 
The animation was very well done in this moment. Uh, I feel like, although it felt like they took a little bit from season one and kind of just reanimated it in a way, it kind of felt the same kind of punch that he did to Boro or Boros or whatever his name was in season one. It felt the same kind of punch, but he did like he was gonna do a, a key blast almost from Dragon Ball Z. He had his hand like, like this, and then he went for the punch and it was glorious. It was a glorious punch. We finally, after all this season, we finally got to see one of Saitama's amazing punches. And I don't care what anyone says. They can say all they want that if we, it's boring, the story gets boring if you keep seeing him one punching enemies. Look, I don't care how many times he's one punched enemies. It's amazing and awesome. Like, it's so amazing every single time that he does it. It never gets boring to me. Whenever I see Saitama show up and one punch an enemy, it's like the greatest feeling ever. So that punch completely disintegrated the centipede. I mean, how powerful this thing was. Nobody could take it out and Saitama just one punches it and it just disintegrates into absolutely nothing. So the battle is won. Saitama saved the day as he always does. Uh, King is in the back, <laughs> terrified. Everyone's kind of like, oh snap, what happened? And the fight's over. Saitama's happy because he just wanted to blow off some steam because he was getting his butt beat in video games. So this was his moment to just unleash all his frustration on this punch. So that monster got hit with like an angry Saitama, which I mean, no wonder it got obliterated. Genos comes up to Saitama and he's like, what do I lack? How do I get to your level? And Saitama is like, you lack power, which essentially that's the only thing he really lacks. He has the resolve. He has the fighting spirit. He just lacks the power he needs to take on monsters that are as powerful as this. And that's kind of where the season ends. Season two ends right in this moment, which it feels really weird. This does not feel like a finale. It feels like a middle episode because we're in the, it feels like we're in the middle of an arc. And then all of a sudden we beat one of these really strong monsters. And it's like, that's the end of the season. And it feels like, there's so much more to come. And I know there is, like obviously there's a lot of story to come because we're it feels like we're in the middle of an arc, but it just feels weird that we ended at this moment in particular. So Garo at the end of the credits is being taken to King Orochi and I don't know what they're gonna do with him. They're gonna keep him prisoner or what the hell, but he's passed out, he needs to rest. And that's pretty much where the episode ends. I mean, it feel, like I said, it feels weird that it ended there, but other than that, it was an amazing episode. Like for me personally, I would give it a 10 out of 10. And I'm glad I could say that, that we have at least two 10 out of 10 episodes this season because the show of One Punch Man, this anime deserves it. It deserves to be highly praised. It's just that the animation quality, the production quality in, at, at least, was very low compared to season one. Season one, it, it left us on such a high level to reach that this one could never do it. This season could just never reach that because it's, it has to be the same studio that did this first season. But with that being said, they did their best. They tried really hard. I can tell they tried really hard, but they just lacked the talent that the first team had when they first started this show. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. Let me know what your guys' favorite part was. I mean. Saitama's punch for me did the whole thing in. I mean, that was the whole episode. <laughs> was that punch and Genos' fight and all. It was just an amazing episode. I loved it. And it had the, for me, it had the best animation of the entire series. I mean, not the entire series. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the entire season. Season one has the best. But this episode did a very well done job. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I will do an in-depth discuss discussion video uh, live stream next week on this season and that'll be it until we get season three if we'll ever get one or when we'll get one I have no idea I haven't heard that it's been announced but anyways guys thank you so much check out the Walking Dead video gameplays the Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay videos my other reactions and live streams and all that stuff and yeah that's pretty much it for me guys so have yourselves a great one